A level in Revit indicates an elevation in which something is drawn, and we can draw in either a section view or an elevation view. To see these levels, under the project browser, scroll down until we find our elevations building elevation, then double click on south to open up the south elevation of our building. We can see the names of our levels and their elevations over on the right hand side. So if we move our cursor over to the right hand side and then spin the wheel of our mouse, we can see that we have a level one and a level two currently inside of our model. If we drew something on level one, it'd be at zero feet, zero inches off of the ground. If we drew it at level two, it'd be at 10 feet off the ground. Also, each one of these levels has a floor plan that corresponds with it. And we can see those floor plans over here under the project browser. What I'd like to do now is draw in three more levels, each at a very specific elevation. But I really don't care when I'm drawing in the level, at what elevation that I originally draw it in at. And the reason for that is that it's very quick to change your overall elevation of your levels after they've been drawn. So just click somewhere inside of your view, spin the wheel of your mouse to zoom out. Underneath the architecture tab, above the word datum, we have level. Select on level. Over on the far left-hand side, when you get this blue dashed line, click, come straight over, and then click again. And then do that two more times. Click, come straight over, you'll get that blue dashed line, click again. Over, click, click again. Then hit escape a couple of times on the keyboard to get out of the level command. Now we need to zoom in to our different levels. So just spin the wheel of your mouse to zoom in. Our next step is to set the height of each of the levels. Level six, I'd like to change to 15 feet. So select this middle level, click on the number, and then type in 15 and then the foot sign. Just click somewhere out here. We can see that the level is automatically adjusted down to 15 feet. And if before this we had drawn anything on level six, instead of being at its original elevation, it would now be at the 15 foot mark. Let's do the same thing with the level seven. Click on the line, click on the number, and change it to 20 feet. For level eight, should be 30 feet like I currently have, but if yours isn't, click on the line, click on the number, type in 30, and then click over here. Once we have each of these levels, the next thing I'd like to do is rename the levels to better represent what these levels actually do. Level one will be the first level of our building, so we'll call it first floor. So click on the line, click on the text, and then type in first floor. And then just click somewhere out here. When you do, it'll ask, would you like to rename the corresponding views? And what it's asking for is, do you want to name the views in the project browser to be first floor? Tell it yes. You'll see that anything that was level one and just the word level one is now called first floor. If we scroll down to our ceiling plans, we'll see that it also is named first floor. If we keep an eye on the two level twos that are here in the view and we do the same thing, click on the line, go to level two and call it second floor. It'll ask, would you like to rename those corresponding views? Yes. Over here, under the project browser, they're both called second floor. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is come up here to where it has level six. For each one of these levels, they'll each indicate where a roof elevation will be. So we'll call each one of these roof, and this will be roof one, the next one up will be roof two, and the third one will be roof three. Rename the first one there, roof one. We'll continue to rename the corresponding views, roof two, and roof three. If we decided not to rename corresponding views, then that level would retain its same name underneath the project browser. Would you like to rename the corresponding view? Yes. Now we can see that they all say roof one, roof two, roof three, here underneath the project browser. If we needed to make an adjustment to the locations of any of these symbols, we could do that as well. Now there's a couple of different ways that we could do that. One way is if we zoom all the way out and then come to the other end, click, and there's a little box. If we put a check mark next to the box, we would then get that same head over on the other side. If we wanted to remove it from the left-hand side, we could just select on the line, clear the checkbox over here, and then it removes it over from the other side. But in this case, I think I'll actually leave them all over on this side. So I'll just select here, clear the checkbox, do the same thing over here. Put a check mark, and now we have those same things over here. The other thing that we could do is if these were very close to one another and we needed to adjust them so that they were further apart, 
you can select on the level line, click on the little break looking symbol right there. When you do, it'll drop it down. So it'll give you a little bit more space in between the different level names. And if you click and hold your mouse button down on the dots, you can drag these back in order to gain further separation. We can see no matter where this goes, it's still at the 10 foot mark. If we select on the levels themselves, and you can just pick on one for this, and you'll see a little circular shape. Click and hold your mouse button down on that circle. You can then pull it in one direction or another, and then all the ones that were directly lined up with one another will move along with it. If we only wanted to move one of them, we could do that too. Just click on the level we wanted to move, click on the little padlock there to unlock it, then click on the circle, and then we can just move one of the levels out independently from all the rest of them. But if we ever line them back up again, we can see that they automatically lock into alignment, which means if we decide to move them, they'll all move in unison one more time. And the final thing I wanted to show is if you did place something on one of these levels and then adjusted the height, it would move up and down with it. Now we'll just place something on one of these levels temporarily. So if we go to the project browser, just double click on roof one, and then I'll draw in a wall. Select on wall, click once, click twice, hit the escape key on the keyboard, and then go back to that elevation view. Scroll back down to your elevations and south elevation. There's the wall. If we were to adjust the height of this roof one, and I'll just call this 19 feet, click out here. Notice how the wall went along with it. If I drop it back down again to 15 feet, the wall will raise and lower based on whatever the elevation is here. And then no matter which view that we're in, whenever we place a wall, we can always delete it by just selecting on it and then hitting the delete key on the keyboard to get rid of that extra content.